So I love the Arch user repository and I honestly think that it is one of the best things that comes with Arch and all of the Arch based distros. So that's probably one of the reasons why I could never really use something like Void or use Gen2, just because the AUR is just so convenient. And up until very, very recently, I haven't had any problems with it. Now, I know some people have problems quicker than others, but it's been about nine months, and this is the first real problem that I've noticed with using the AUR. Now, the problem that I had was with my version of Polybar. So what happened was I installed Polybar a few months back. Then what happened was that JSON CPP got updated. Now, JSON CPP is one of the libraries that Polybar depends on. Now the problem that happens here is that because I built Polybar with an older version of the library and then it got updated, basically Polybar wasn't actually able to find the library that it needed anymore. So all that happened was that Polybar just stopped working. I tried to run it and I was like, I cannot find JSON CPP. And I was like, okay, this is weird. All I did was just reinstall Polybar and then it worked perfectly fine. So just rebuilding the package fixed the problem. So Polybar was still compatible with JSON CPP it was just built with an older version in mind, so because the version was updated, it just couldn't find it anymore. So, this led me to think about something, that the AUR, it may be sort of like a package repo, but it's not a package repo in the more traditional sense. So the problem that arises here is when you use something like an AUR helper. So an AUR helper, specifically something like Yay, it acts exactly like using Pac-Man, and the problem with this is that it really hides the fact that the AUR is not a package repo. Yes, Yay is really convenient, and I'm not gonna stop using it. I think that it is a really useful program, and being able to easily install programs from the AUR like that, honestly, is super convenient. So I'm not gonna stop using it, but make sure you keep in mind that the AUR isn't exactly a package repo, and Yay isn't exactly a package manager. So a more traditional package repo is going to be far more curated. And what an actual package manager does is that a package manager will make sure problems like this don't happen. Now, obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but it's generally going to be easier. So what a package manager will normally do, it'll really depend on what you're using, but most of them, what they're going to do is either try to rebuild the program or they'll just maintain two versions of the library. And then when a new version of the program comes in, it'll basically just rebuild the package then and you'll notice no problems whatsoever. Now, obviously this isn't perfect, but generally it's going to be perfectly fine. And the benefit of using an actual package manager is that it hides away all of this complexity from the user. But when you're using something like the AUR, you don't have the ability to hide away this complexity. Now, apparently it's getting easier and I'll get back to that in a little bit, but it is supposed to be getting easier at least some point in the future. I don't know when, but some point in the future. So before I go completely off track, the reason why we use package repos and the reason why we use package managers on Linux is to hide away this complexity because your package manager will deal with these problems basically out of sight so the user doesn't really need to worry about them. Now, when you install something from the AUR, however, you're actually basically treated as the maintainer of that package. Obviously, it's going to be up to the maintainer of the actual package build to make sure they don't put malware in or they don't try to do something like, I don't know, delete your root directory. But ultimately, you are the one who is responsible for auditing the packages. So if someone does do something like that and you don't catch it, that's entirely your fault. You should be checking the package builds. Now, I know I've recommended using something like Yay in the past. I would only really recommend using Yay on very, very popular programs. I wouldn't really recommend it on things that haven't had a single comment on them, for example, on the AUR website. Make sure you only really use something like an AUR helper for things you know are going to be safe. So for things like LF, for things like Polybar, things that have a ton of eyes on them. If you're downloading something like, I don't know, drivers for some random printer, I would recommend manually installing that just to make sure that they're not trying to do anything nefarious. Now, the other thing you need to make sure you're doing is actually maintaining your dependencies manually. So, as I was saying before, with that polybar example, when JSON CPP updated, it was my responsibility at that point to make sure that I rebuilt polybar so I'd actually run it. Now, I've probably had problems like this in the past, but they weren't as visible. So, this was the first time that I'd actually seen this happen where it had completely broken the program. Now, if we go back to the polybar example for a second, when you install something like that and the dependencies change, it is entirely up to you to actually maintain your dependencies. So if, for example, with polybar, JSON CPP updates, at that point, it is your responsibility to make sure that you rebuild polybar to ensure that you can actually still run it. 
So this has probably happened in the past to me. I just didn't notice it because I probably updated my programs before I went and used that AUR program again. Or just the, I guess, problem wasn't as pronounced as I'm literally not able to actually launch the application. So you might be asking at this point, if you have no idea how this works, how are you possibly supposed to maintain your dependencies for all of these different programs? Isn't this completely insane? What if a program has just a hundred different dependencies? How can you feasibly actually maintain this? So I found this post over on Reddit, which I'll just switch over to my main screen and actually show you. So here is a post basically about the exact same problem that I'm talking today. So there's this big conversation here that's happening, but the post we actually, or the, the reply that we actually care about is this one right here. So how do official maintainers actually maintain the dependencies? Doing it manually is insane and people with 100 plus maintained packages can't possibly manually check for updates in every library bump. So what they use is a program called check package, which notifies if any of the slash user slash lib slash uh, so files has a name change. So if it has a name change, it's very likely the name change is because it has a new version out. So then they use a program called SOGREP or SOGREP. I'm going to say it's SOGREP to find the packages that link towards said library. So to do lists are made on the arch web and this is all part of the dev tools. So is this some obscure feature I forgot to turn on in yay? So this is in relation to having yay do this automatically for you. So the problem is pretending AUR is a package repository and using a Pacman pretender program like Yay. You're better off if you start handling AUR package builds as actual packages you maintain in a repository yourself. Now I don't have as negative a perspective on this as the poster here. I do think that using a tool like Yay actually is really, really helpful as long as you do keep these problems in mind. So let's just go down a bit further and see the other response I wanted to look at. So it's this one right here. So. I'm still surprised that no AUI helper that I know of does it. And this is in relation to actually checking these packages and these libraries and then basically rebuilding the programs without really having the user worry about it. So the AUI utils tooling community has been messing around with some alternatives, but again, it's not super straightforward. Now, I don't really know the actual problems that exist here, but, but this is the AUI utils repo. So if you want to come help out with this, I guess you can. As you can see, they are also a bunch of weebs because of course they are, because apparently everyone on Linux is a weeb. But anyway, if you want to have a look at AUR utils, I'm not going to do that in this video. This is probably way above my head. But anyway, that is that right there. Now this page here is the uh, to-do list thing that was listed in that first post that we saw. Now this is basically a list used by developers when a rebuild of a set of packages is needed. So if you want to check this list, basically this will have basically anything that is going to force a rebuild. So conversion of programs that use Python 2 to Python 3. If we look down here, uh, here is the JSON CPP example. So when JSON CPP changed, that would have appeared on this list. So you could check here and say, oh, okay, my polybar is dying because of JSON CPP. It's probably going to be on this list here. So what about these programs that this person mentioned as well? So they are in the DevTools package. So if we just install that one, sudo pacman s Dev tools. I've already got it installed because I installed it off camera, but let's have a look at the man page for those two programs. So check package will basically compare the current build package with the repository version. So once again, a lot of this stuff is a bit over my head, but I just wanted to basically point you in the direction of this in case you have a problem like this, or if you just want to look into more about how the AUR actually works. I typically just treat it as some magic thing in the background and I don't really want to think too much about it. So that other one that the dude mentioned was SOGREP or SOGREP. I'm, go I'm going to assume that SOGREP is probably the correct way to pronounce it. So SOGREP find shared library links in an Arch Linux repository. So as this dude was saying before, you'll be able to use this to find packages that link towards said library. So I'm not going to dive into how these tools work today partially because I don't really understand them and partially because what I wanted to do today was basically just point people in the direction of these programs because I don't really think that you really need to worry about a lot of this stuff for the most part. So uh, for about nine months now, I haven't really had a problem dealing with the AUR, but if you do want to look more into how it works, and I might do that myself and do a full dedicated video on how these programs work and more of a, I guess, a deeper look into how the AUR works, but generally what I do is I just treat it as some magic box. I look at the package builds and I look at the dependencies 
Anything else besides that, I don't understand remotely how it works. I just leave that up to the people who are far more intelligent than I am, and I just accept that I can install programs really easily on my system and let the intelligent people deal with the hard stuff. So I did say something that someone's probably going to disagree with, and that's the fact that I generally use an AUR helper for really popular programs. And the reason for this is because I can treat the comment section on an AUR page like this as basically an external way to do auditing. So if no one in the comment section here says, basically, I don't know, this program is trying to, or this package build is trying to delete your root directory, or if no one says that there's some build problem and it doesn't work, generally, there's not really gonna be a problem. Now, honestly, you should probably still be checking your package builds, and this isn't an endorsement from me to say, don't check your package builds for really popular programs. What it is, though, is that I'm generally lazy. <laughs> to be completely honest, I am generally pretty lazy, and if no one in the comment section since the last update says that anything's off, I'm generally just going to assume that it's probably going to be safe. You should be checking your package builds, though. Don't let me saying this stop you from actually checking your package builds. You should be doing it, but if you're lazy from time to time when you're trying to install something like Polybar or LF, or any other really popular program that is in the AUR, it's probably going to be safe. But as I said multiple times, you still should be checking your package builds, even on really popular programs like this. So I might do a future video on just generally why I love the AUR, but for now, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. So before I end the video, I'd like to thank my patrons, Andrew Road, LQ Larry, and Zilva, because they help make this channel possible. So if you want to have your name read out at the end of a video, or if you want to support the channel, that's probably a more sensible reason to actually pay me money, then go check out my Patreon down below. I've also got my social links, that'll be my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff, and also my alternate video platforms, so my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check any of those out as well. I've now got some Amazon affiliate links, they'll be down below as well. Uh, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon, and also remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.